Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your life coach, mentor coach. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. And this is Gloria, your life coach. I help those who are feeling stuck, struggling with difficulties such as self-doubt, inner judgment, lack of confidence, life transitions, and taking steps forward. And welcome to Life's A Shuffle podcast. Now, you may wonder why it's called Life's A Shuffle. And the reason why we came up with this title was that life is really shuffling. And it doesn't matter where you come from, your background, what age you are, you're shuffling multiple things in life. And the best thing to know in life is everybody faces your struggles and everybody faces what you're going through. But there's hope in learning something about that. So when our guests share their journey, the hope is you learn something in that journey so yourself can navigate the struggles you face, the low self-esteem, the self-confidence. And that's why we call podcast Life's a Shuffle. And throughout this podcast, we share our personal overcoming stories, as well as our guests who shares their personal journey in overcoming their personal struggles. Life's a Shuffle podcast is here to connect like-minded individuals. And thank you for listening to Life's a Shuffle podcast. Hi, this is Gloria, life coach and meditation coach. Welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, mindfulness coach and life coach. And welcome to episode four with Jesse Lucas. She's back again to talk about realign. As you guys know, we had episode one, if you missed it, episode two, episode three. We're getting this great buildup and now she's going to lay it out for us. It's like uh, your mom, grandma's warm apple pie. She spends hours baking the pie and now it's probably done to eat. A la mode ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, good morning, good afternoon. How are you today? Hi, thank you so much for the warm welcome. I know before we hit record, we were talking about you know fall and fall activities. I think warm apple pie might have to might have to go on the list as far as something that I I do enjoy. Well, hello everybody, um, Ron, Gloria, and and your beautiful audience. Thank you so much for having me back. Um, this it is a build. I like how you put that um, to bring everybody up to speed. If you are jumping in on the Align episode and haven't heard the previous ones, the whole context here is what I call embodied movement. And I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a snippet on what I mean by that. And there is a process within that. There is a build. It's release and now we are real, realigned. But before all that, that embodiment piece, what I mean by that is really living in your body. And I know that kind of sounds ridiculous. Like where else would you live? But so many of us are experiencing, uh, you might not have used this term, but disembodiment or disconnection or dissociation or just not feeling truly like yourself is kind of really the best way. I, and the easiest way I can put it, and this can be everything from having physical pain that just does not allow you to feel good in your body. That takes a lot of energy and mental capacity and emotional capacity to deal with all the way through to emotional kind of dissociation or disconnection. And, and we're even talking mental health here kind of really disconnecting from, from your own truth. So realign, whenever I talk about our, our bodies in this context of embodied movement, I'm talking about kind of, let's call it a three-part version of your body, your physical body, your emotional body, and your mental body. And what is very cool about talking about realign in this context of embodied movement, when you can make changes, positive improvements, hopefully, to your physical alignment, and that's kind of where I want to start here, it actually creates a a ripple effect or snowball effect to realigning things emotionally and realigning things mentally, but we can, uh, we can kick this off by talking about 
physical realignment because I know one thing I hear the most having been a yoga teacher and personal trainer for going on almost 20 years is I have bad posture. I'm a sloucher. I know I should, you know, I, all, all of those things. And there is a huge impact on your posture, whether it's just bad postural habits or a postural deviation, something you have had, maybe you were born with or a postural deviation because of an injury or a surgery and digging deeper to how that really makes you feel in your body and your emotional well-being and your mental health on a daily basis is huge. And it's just one of the windows that, you know, maybe you can understand that that's a thing, but then it just stops there. Like, what do you, what do you actually do about that? So I'm going to, I'm going to pause right there before I go any further. And um, Ron and Gloria, is there anything there that you want to kind of either highlight or ask about, or I can just keep, keep jamming here. You know what? I had a question about when you said disembodied and how, what does that mean really mean? Can you explore it a little more? Yes. So when I was writing my master's thesis and my graduate degree, I came across this, this article and it said in the German language, I might have mentioned this on, a, on the podcast before. So this might be a review for some of you. In the German language, there's actually two words for the word, our, in English, we have the one word body. One is corpor and one is lieb. And corpor is like the body that, like this is a body that I can take on a walk. This is a body that if it needs medical attention, it you know, the doctor takes a look at. If I need surgery, it's the body that goes on the table. But the lieb, the lieb is the lived body. It is your whole sense of self. It is your whole experience of you. And disembodied is like, imagine if this whole experience of you started having pieces taken away. Maybe you went through a stressful experience and you kind of shut down around a certain, a certain thing, a certain situation, a certain kind of person. And that's kind of shut down. Maybe you had a traumatic experience and it really kept you from really being able to handle being in your body, that there's, there's a block, that there's a layer kind of keeping you from really having that, that lieb, that lived experience that's disembodiment. So anything, so, and I know for, for a good decade, maybe decade and a half, when I was deep in my single parenting mode, I've, I've talked about that quite a bit here on our series, I was living in survival mode. And where I couldn't really see past the end of my nose, I, you know, it's just day to day, sometimes moment to moment or breath to breath. And there was so much stress, so much strain, so much struggle, so much trauma and um, negativity that I was dealing with on the inside. But on the outside, I had to make things happen. I had to take care of my kids. I had to put food on the table, keep the roof over our head. And so I was disconnected from truly living that, that survival mode. That's one of the biggest robbers of living as your true self. So anything that takes you away from the fullness of living you is disembodiment. So pain, physical pain, pain that kind of takes over your, your life, uh, stress, is a big one. Trauma is a big one. All of these things can contribute to disembodiment. So you can just kind of think about it as being disconnected from feeling yeah. like your true self. Mm, okay. I like that. I like that. It resonates high with me. What hit the nail on the head for me is um, when I quit my full-time job, you know, you go from having a, a paycheck, 401k, which didn't match, but a plan, benefits, whatever. When I quit my full-time job, it was too, I call it... Um, pedal to the metal. I blocked mm -hmm. everything out so I can just make sure I'm surviving. I can pay my rent, put food on the table, take care of my bills, you know, necessary things. And I, before I know it, I, my life, it's like driving a car with a defective steering wheel. I was not in control of my life anymore. I was working seven days a week. I was working, I call it bell to bell, 5 a.m. to like 10 o'clock at night. I will never forget, um, 
I worked 25 days straight and um, I could not work the 26th day. Um, that 25th day, it's like from August 1st to August 25th, I text my clients. I'm like, hey, you know what? I can't make kind of work tomorrow. I worked 25 days straight. I just could not move anymore. Body was shutting down. I remember coming home from work, you know, nine o'clock at night. I'm just taking my bags, throw them on the ground. I just collapse on my living room floor because I'm so exhausted. Man, that that really hit home for me because, you know, when that survival mode kicks in, you block everything out and you just know go pedal to the metal and. Up until you either get stressed, with, some, something happens and make you slam on the brakes. It can be stress, it can be trauma, it can be sickness. Something causes you slam on the brakes, and it's a it's an all inspiring experience. And you have a choice: you either go left or you go right. Um, another experience I had just a week and a half ago: I was coaching a client um, with my contract job, and. Uh, you know, doing my contract job, when we coach clients, you have to do these in-between assessments. That's just part of the program. And um, part of the program are these assessments if it takes. So what happens, I will message you at least 40 hours in advance. You now, Jesse or Gloria, did you guys do your assessment? Usually it's like, okay, good, I get it done. And from there, you start your assessment. What I notice is um, with clients, when they would um, do the assessment, they'll be okay. In this particular case, when I asked the client, hey, did you do the assessment? She said, what do you mean? I said, this in-between assessment. She just starts pouring out so much anger about the assessment. I don't feel like doing assessments. I'm going to sign up for it. so much work. Before you know it, she, was, she saw bawling in tears. That was a breaking point. Mm. It, it was, I mean, pretty much she dumped all her frustration, right? Because you got to realize in coaches, it's never about you, it's about them. So she dumped all her frustration about the assessment. Really, the frustration was she's tired of working so many hours and tired of not being in charge of her whole life and having balance that that was just a pin. And it hit and that bloom burst and she just started bawling. And she's like, you know what? I got to make some changes. And from then on, she's going to start making changes in her life to get her balance back in her life. Mm -hmm. Both of those examples are exactly why we want to go through this lens of embodiment. So that's what happens. Like when you reach a state of disembodiment, you don't even know it. Like, like you said, Ron, you're singularly focused. You're doing what is right in front of you, the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. And you feel like you're doing something. Right. And most mm -hmm. of the times you're overworked, overburdened, over, you know, it, but, and there's so much stimulation. You're like, how can there be something empty when <laughs> things feel so crazy? And you hit that breaking point, you know, for you on that 26th day for this client, the, the assessment form. And when you are kind of forced and, you know, for you, your body was just like, nope, no more. No, not going on anymore for this client. Just the 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 assignment to do this assessment. It, you know, it can come from any any angle when you are forced to oh, turn in, tune in. What is you know, inquire within. You realize how far you've gone. It's like um, here's another practical example, and then I'll I'll loop it back to the realignment when you're driving. And you were, you know, deep in thought about something or listening to something, and you all of a sudden you realize, oh my gosh, how did I get here? <laughs> I, I don't exit. remember That's the last funny. three miles, right? <laughs> you know, like how where were the last three miles? And maybe sometimes you're on still on the same, you know, the correct path, or and maybe sometimes you've missed your exit or whatever. But that is disembodiment right there. You don't know how you got from where you were to where you are. There was a lack of engagement in that process. And on, on the flip side, you know, for the listeners, those examples that Ron just gave, it can happen on the other end of the spectrum too. It can happen in kind of deep depression or lethargy or numbness or lack of motivation. Disembodiment can also be a kind of just too quiet tuning out. You know, those examples were kind of more aroused, like, get things done kind of examples, it, the same exact phenomena can happen on the other end of the spectrum and just like, you know, it, in, in a stillness, but not that, that mindful, peaceful, 
meditative kind of stillness, but the, the inertia kind of stillness. So this is where, you know, now that, that we kind of can understand, okay, if embodiment is the lived body, the truth we're living, we, every, everything feels aligned. My, I, I feel like my true self, my body feels like it's, it's my ally. And then there's disembodiment. Something is off. I don't know how I got from there to here along the way, because life, life's every single day we have, you know, we have to go through the motions of our day, physically, emotionally, mentally, things can throw us off track. So let's say there was a physical misalignment. I'll give a really simple example that I've seen time and time again in my personal training career, you know, that forward head posture that we all know so well, especially spending the last year and a half on so many Zooms sitting at the computer, you know, that the head is kind of jutted forward, more forward than it should be, right? Maybe the shoulder slouched down a little bit. Gone unchecked over time, and depending on whatever else is going on in your body, it might not take that much time. It might take a, a decade or so, but that can create some serious compression in your your neck bones, your cervical vertebrae, that compression can create nerve damage. It can, at its worst, create paralysis or partial paralysis. If we realign that, if we catch that forward head posture early on, when we can make the changes to bring it back into physical alignment, not only do we avoid the potential cascade of those pretty horrible physical effects that could come from that, but we give the opportunity for the, the major kind of bony weights of the body, the skull, the rib cage, the pelvis to be in good alignment, which means breathing happens better, which means the nerves fire better on a, you know, kind of clean circuitry, which means, you know, no, no stress headaches, which means, uh, you know, all of these things that kind of fuel your vitality that give you the opportunity to have that lieb that lived experience. Same thing if you have a fascia, your connective tissue, a fascial distortion or scar tissue, something pulling you out of alignment. You know, I have um, some scar tissue in, in one of my hips and I know one of my legs operates a little bit differently than the other. And if I had not from the very beginning caught that and trained my body both, you know, in the gym, or just in my ha noticing how I walk, just walking around my house, walking to the car, walking around the grocery store, that could have really pulled me off center and caused greater damage down the line. By catching it, realigning, I now have balanced feet on the ground. You know, I, I still notice it. It still takes some awareness. It still, still takes some, some modifications, but it's in my awareness and under control so that I can keep myself from veering way off track, taking the wrong exit. If you don't, you know, if you're not thinking about where you're going kind of thing um, and be able to stay engaged at the, in the process of being in my body. And when you think about this on those other layers of the body, those are just a couple of physical examples, the more off you are, and not to say you have to, there, that there is a perfect alignment. I'm just talking about awareness. You know, if, if, if you have, you know, a common spinal deviation, scoliosis, it's not to say in order to be okay, you have to correct that and have what we consider an ideally aligned spine. It, it is to say, you need to do the best for, for the functions, the, the mechanisms that you have. So not, not saying that there's one ideal, but the, the ideal that you are going for here is a level of awareness so that you don't miss things that are pulling you off that sense of yourself. One of the things I have seen happen working with clients in the space of embodied movement, not just on the, on the fitness floor, is when you can gain that level of body awareness and that level of I'll, I'll call it control in, in tweaking your physical alignment. There 
it allows for a more clear flow of emotions. It allows for a more clear sense of groundedness and centeredness in your mind. And the sneaky part is oftentimes physical alignments kind of hide or hold our little pain pockets. I saw this all the time on the yoga floor. We'd you know, go into a hip opening pose or something like that pigeon. And then somebody, I find somebody crying on their mat because some tightness in their hip was released and that tightness was related to holding some sort of emotional pain that they had been carrying along. I know when we talked in the release episode, we talked about the body kind of holding our history. Release gives you access to that. Realign gives you the ability to move through it. Does that land? Am I making sense here? Wow. (laughs) Those are great information that I just, just listening. Thank you. (laughs) It, it, it is making sense. I was just, you know, sometimes when, when I'm listening and I'm hearing that, I kind of try to relate it to my own situation as well. And then, you know, you talked about yoga and and I get that. I understand. Even missing missing the exit. Oh, God, I've missed the exit a couple of times. I feel like I've dozed out, you know, like a few times also just missing the exit. But yeah, that makes total sense. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's the thing that we can we can go our whole entire lives not knowing that this is something that we can we can be consciously engaged in in our own health and well-being and it it's not isolated to the yoga floor and that was part of the inspiration to create the embodied movement approach because this kind of thing can be applied to any movement modality or even just how you are in your body in your day-to-day life even if you have no dedicated movement practice. It can be applied just to your your moment to moment being in your body. And just, I know it gets a little wonky sometimes when we talk about, oh, storing emotions in the body and realigning that. But I will tell you, when you can use the techniques we discussed in release, and when you can get to this point of realign and have that level of awareness and start, releases where you start to kind of be engaged, actively engaged in the process, take some control. And I know I've used this term before, kind of light up that switchboard. You are given more of yourself back that you have maybe lost along, you know, between where you were and where you didn't realize you got to. And that is very empowering. It is very empowering. So part of the realign is about and if that's why we go through safety first, that's why we go through release first, because if we open up these pain pockets, it can be intense. It can be intense. And moving through that and bringing it back consciously, and this is where you know, I'm going to start teasing what we'll be talking about in the next episode of Strengthen, this is where you can really start to have that empowered piece in the ah, oh, I need that change and look how good it feels. And now I have my energy back. Now I have some confidence. Now I can move forward more powerfully because I'm not moving off kilter anymore. I am moving in, you know, for whatever way, like I know some of some of the scar tissue I have in my hip and from that old silly injury, you know, probably will always be there, but I, it's not holding me back anymore. And even if it was, and I had some limitations, I would know I had the most awareness and the most control over what I can do with it. What are the smart things? And the whole point of this realign is for you to become the master of yourself so that, you know, physical therapy is great. All of the, you know, to support emotionally, mentally, to kind of get yourself back is great. But I believe the person who should be first on that list is you, the person inhabiting your body. And when you start playing with realignment, it gets really illuminating to this this body that you are living in. It's very exciting. 
It is, you know, wow. what, you hit something that was uh, crucial that I heard. So like you hear some people go to the doctor, I'm not feeling well. Doc says, okay, what's your temperature? Oh, you're 97.5, 96.5, whatever temperature is, you're fine. Okay, I, I think I'm, I might be having a headache. Okay, everything's going fine. They find nothing completely wrong with you. And you ask the doc, could it be stressed? They probably look at you and say yes. Because it's funny, I had a client the other day, he went to the hospital, they couldn't find nothing wrong with him, like, you know, that they can kind of fix. And then he says to the doctor, what could it be stress? He says, yes, I think it's stress. And um, what he was telling me is that he's working 260 hours a month. Oh, my. Mm. Mm. And that he has no bandwidth. Um, bandwidth, for those out there, that engineers understand. But bandwidth means not enough energy to spend time with his wife or his kid. His son wants to play with him because he's two years old. He's like, oh, what do you want now? Okay, here you go. It's five minutes. He's very frustrated with that. You can see the pull and the push of, well, I should be working harder because I got to make my money, but I want to spend time with my, my son. And, you know, what Jesse's saying to you guys out there is that, you know, your body is, is telling you something and we got to let that stuff go, release it. Because 260 hours a, a week for this, sorry, a month for this client, that's a lot. That's a lot of just not even taking a step back to breathe. Spend mm -hmm. time with your family. Do things you love doing. It's just work, 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 work. And to what end, right? That is such a good point. I I will wrap my contribution to this with with this using that example. I had a you know different story but similar experience. I was having all of these weird physical things, like I got tunnel vision, and that was really what kind of uh, tipped me off. And I told my my partner at the time, look, I think you got to take me to the emergency room. I don't know what's going on. So we get to the emergency room and it was one of those times when it was just kind of over full and they, they would say, well, you got to just wait in this bed in the hallway. And I was like, I was feeling very afraid. Like, I cannot, I can't, I cannot sit here. I cannot sit here. I need to at least be behind a curtain, behind a room. And I, I was, can you please advocate for me? Can you help find a more private place? I, I'm scared because I, I couldn't see very well at the moment. And I was very scared. Was like, all of this, you know, emergency room, the lights are very bright. There's people going this way and that way. And you know, it's not exactly the most high vibe, happy place. And when they wouldn't, or, you know, maybe they weren't able to accommodate that, I, said, I have to leave. I, I cannot be here. So I left and I was like, well, if I'm having a stroke or something, like take me back there, you know, do something. And if not, then, you know, maybe I'll follow up with my doctor later. Maybe we'll get through this. So fast forward, it turns out I was having a panic attack. And it's that was the first I'd never had one before. This was my adult life. I'd never had a panic attack before. And it started what became a few years of panic attacks, but it was unfamiliar to me. And it was because there were so many things in my life that were misaligned. So mm. that example right there, you know, that, and I always talk about, and this might have to be a whole bonus episode, stress, stress is a threshold for so many of these things. And it is often the indicator of that, that line between our physical health and our emotional and mental well being, And this is, this is part of the power of learning alignment and realigning yourself in an embodied way because so through that lesson for myself and, and what your client that you were giving that example is some self-awareness of noticing, okay, what are some changes I can make? You know, can I add three minutes, five minutes of intentional breathing or meditation in the morning. And maybe it's while I'm in the bathroom, like, you know, or something like that, whatever we can do if our schedules are busy or family demands or wh whatever we can do, little changes, right? Saying, saying no to that next work assignment. So you can say yes to family dinners mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever these things are and notice these signals from your body that start to become you know, whether it's headaches or panic attacks or, or tension or pain, these are signals from your body. It's an alarm system. Pain or these, these, these symptoms are an alarm system for something going on. And granted, of course, you know, and not in the scope of this con conversation is maybe it means a disease diagnosis or something like that. So often 
it is a signal that something is misaligned. And when you can learn those things, it's my closing statement here, when you can learn those things and learn from the physical signals of your body, you can start to make those little changes, be a scientist of yourself, figure out what's going to make improvements, help me feel better in my body, help me feel better in my life. That ripple effect there coming into alignment is massive and can create a healthier you, a healthier family, a healthier life trajectory versus what happens if you don't. So wow. I will leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. Can you repeat what you said one more time, please? Oh, I will try. So the, 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 the impact of this, so taking it back to that kind of in how, what, how stress operates in your body, these, these physical indicators that your body mm. gives you, you know, a racing heart that might, for me in that, that extreme circumstance, the tunnel vision, it might just be, you know, your, your gut feels off, you know, you could, your, your digestion isn't working well, it, or all of your aches and pain spots are always achy and painy or headaches, whatever. These signals, now again, disclaimer short, this is not a, you know, to say do not inquire. It might be something medically serious that deserves attention, but most often it is an indicator that something in your life is misaligned. Mm. Stress being a threshold and it's, it's going to go kind of attack those weak spots. Some people, it ends up as physical pain, you know, fibromyalgia, something like that. Some people, it ends up in panic attacks. Some people, it ends up in digestion or heart issues. But it is your signal to tune in. And it is not enough to just mitigate the symptom, but to inquire what is, what is behind that that's kind of firing off this alarm so I can bring that into alignment when you can start making those little changes and you start noticing, Oh, I woke up today and my heart wasn't racing or, Oh, I didn't have any digestion, digestive issues today. Or, Oh, what I started noticing was more and more time went by between panic attacks. They became less and less and less until, until they were just gone. And now I know when the, you know, the stress levels rise, I know to watch for those physical signals so that I can stop them and don't have another panic attack. So this is what gives you your life back or takes you down the path where these things have a hold of you. Wow. I love that. You know, what resonated for me is, um, is when I listen to a lot, I used to listen to a lot of motivation YouTube videos. Some are really good. And a lot of them talk about go through pain, go through pain. It's good to go through pain. Damn it. Pain is telling you something. Once you stop and investigate, don't just keep going, keep going, keep going. It's telling you something. And, uh, you know, you know, one guy in one of the videos says pain is temporary, but pain, yes, temporary, but it does transform. Pain doesn't simply just go away. It may be transformed into a heart racing, transformed to having mig migraines and headaches. It's telling you something. Investigate to all you guys out there and find what's going on. Be medical or be it that you're going through a stressful period of time in your life. So, yes, Jesse, you slammed information on us today and I loved it. You <laughs> slammed it on me. I love it. This one's a really good one. I love this yes. one. Yes. Yeah. Like a Mike Tyson awesome. uppercut. You knock the sweat off my, my brow. <laughs> oh, awesome. And you know, when, when you, when you do start inquiring on that pain, you will find sometimes it is a pain to push through, you know, that, that is an option as well, but it's not the only option and should not be the only one talked about. So slam dunk, mic drop. There you go. Let's all be better, <laughs> like better drop. connoisseurs, <laughs> a better connoisseurs of our pain realign. And then next time we will tell you how to strengthen around that new alignment so you can hold it. You guys heard it out there. Jesse is way to strengthen that. So we can get that mic. I call it the Mike Tyson uppercut. You know, back in the nineties, we watched Mike Tyson boxing. He had the best upper, uppercut ever seen. So <laughs> Jesse, thanks again for this huge nugget. Today was a big nugget. I feel like I'm going mining for gold. And thanks You're for welcome. being on Life I Show Podcast. I can't wait to talk about strengthen and episode five. Yes. Thanks again, Jesse. And this is again, episode four, Realigned with Jesse Lucas. Thanks, everyone.